I know we're a little bit behind schedule, but I'm so pleased to be here to share some of what Georgia Tech is doing in the space of um, what the 21st century university will look like and uh, what the uh, T-shaped professional is all about and what cross-cultural competence might mean. So before I get started with this brief presentation, and I will make it very brief, let me just see a show of hands. For how many of you in the audience has being multi, bi or multilingual and having had cross-cultural experience? For how many of you have that had, has that had an important part in your career? All right, well, I probably don't even need to give, you know, to give this presentation because you probably know already many of the things that I will be talking about, but I'll go through it anyway and give a little bit of context of what Georgia Tech is doing in this, um, in this space. So this is what I'm going to talk about very quickly. I was asked to uh, present some of what the Center for 21st Century Universities and um, the Commission on Creating the Next in Education is doing. I'll um, speak briefly about the College of Liberal Arts and then go through a couple of examples of what we do in the School of Modern Languages um, under the rubric of uh, the, uh, the future of work. So um, we heard earlier about the commission in creating the next in education. And uh, one of the core initiatives at Tech is something called whole person education. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in a, in a moment. Um, and uh, this is part of what makes Georgia Tech a, a particularly innovative and um, creative institute, an institution of technology, is this in deliberate uh, emphasis on, uh, on a multifaceted education that spans uh, many different sectors. The Center for 21st Century Universities is a uh, research arm of the institution, and I, I didn't write these slides, they were given to me, so I hope that you can read them. And uh, what this is uh, quite a bit about is about um, transformational large-scale uh, innovation in the educational sector. And um, we heard about um, Jill Watson, the AI um, student assistant and so forth. And um, I uh, believe that others, you know, earlier today have, have talked quite a bit about, about some of the, the priorities of the Center for 21st Century un Universities. And uh, they're very interested in working with, um, with those, with alums, with corporations, with nonprofits, and so forth to figure out what needs uh, there might be in education for the future, and especially ones that are international and global. So very much encourage um, consideration of working with the, with the center in, in that regard. We've also heard a little bit about Georgia Tech professional education. This is, uh, Georgia Tech is one of the institutions in the world that provides the most, uh, both in scale and number of programs in terms of that professional executive continuing education. And uh, the statistics are really quite extraordinary. Um, 33,000 individuals every year en enrolled as learners in Georgia Tech professional education. More than half of the world's countries are represented. Uh, the learners a range in age from 16 to 85 years of age. And um, we heard earlier about the, um, the, new em the, the increased emphasis on online education, both in terms of um, degree programs, fully online, but also in terms of tailored professional executive education uh, that's done on the Georgia Tech campus virtually and uh, at locations all over the world. The, um, uh, these can all be customized, and uh, I um, was asked to relay uh, contact information and uh, a warm invitation to reach out to Stephen Harmon at Georgia Tech Professional Education, also part of the Center for, the 20, Center for 21st Century Universities, for anyone who's interested in really mobilizing and leveraging this extraordinary set of resources that are available at Georgia Tech. Some of you may know about them. For others, this might be news. Uh, but this is uh, a, um, an exceptional arm of the university um, to provide lifetime education for learners in all walks of life um, and uh, with all, uh, all sorts of interests. So I serve on the advisory board for the Center for 21st Century Universities, and this is a really exciting space to be in. 
And uh, part of what we will be doing is to um, work a bit more on what I had on the first slide, which is this uh, notion of the whole person education. So um, the um, part of what we do then at the School of Modern Languages is that we envision what the future of work might look like. And uh, many of you have talked about that um, in your presentations. I have certainly heard about um, many of these issues in my conversations with, with you um, earlier today. And uh, that is um, that at Georgia Tech, not you, anyone going through Georgia Tech will get um, an extraordinary education um, for um, a STEM-driven, technologically rich environment of, of today and for uh, careers in that, um, in that space. But what does it look like to leverage that capacity and competence to have a career that's um, rewarding, engaging, and in alignment with Georgia Tech's strategic plan, which is to educate good global citizens and to be a good global citizen itself. Um, I'll talk in a moment about the College of, of Liberal Arts. Um, but one of the key components of the commission in creating the next in education is the notion of whole person education. And um, we use the term the essential 21st century skills. And everyone who's been speaking today has touched on these in one way or another. Problem solving, creativity, teamwork, leadership, uh, cross-cultural competence, uh, initiative, adaptability, sustainability, uh, entrepreneurship. And um, Georgia Tech is, um, is taking a, a very um, deliberate and, uh, and uh, committed approach to integrating many of these um, aspects into, um, into educational programs, part of continuing education, and so forth. What is the T-shaped professional? Well, all of you in the room are T-shaped professionals. That means that you have a very deep experience, set of expertise in the area in which you were uh, trained, whether that is um, mechanical engineering, computer science, business, or architecture. Um, and um, the, um, the T-shaped professional, the top of the T, well, that's where both the School of Modern Languages and uh, the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts truly comes in. This is the cross-training uh, needed to be a successful entrepreneur, leader, employee, teammate, and I would also say human being uh, in terms of knowing um, how to communicate well, how to communicate across cultures, whether those are national, linguistic cultures, or even cultures within an organization. Um, how to uh, build and recognize what a successful uh, corporate or nonprofit culture might look like. What's the, what are the perspectives? What are the networks? And um, key here in the T-shaped professional is also the notion of a truly global understanding and uh, an interest and engagement in, uh, in being part of shaping what that, uh, that might look like. So I'll go back for a moment to the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts. So some of you may or may not know that Georgia Tech has absolutely an extraordinary college of liberal arts, um, schools of public policy, economics, uh, history and sociology, literature, media and communication, international affairs, and modern languages. So the top of the T that we were talking about just a little bit earlier, that's where um, a lot of that education happens. Um, Ethics was brought up as an example earlier. What does it mean um, to, uh, to, be, to be at the forefront in entrepreneurship and innovation, yet maintaining a very strong focus on ethics, on inclusivity, on diversity of opinion, of, of wanting to learn from, uh, from your colleagues, from your customers, and, uh, and from your friends. So at the college, we um, use four different components to talk about what we do. Um, we might not always solve the big global problems, but we'll address them and we'll help provide perspectives on what they, um, what they are and how to solve them. We impact every student. Every Georgia Tech student is an Ivan Allen College alum. Nobody can pass through and gain um, a Georgia Tech education without being part of the uh, Ivan Allen College. We uh, emphasize technology and science. We want our students, our faculty, our postdocs, our alums um, to thrive in and contribute to a world driven by technology and science. And uh, 
we emphasize civil rights and social justice uh, in building on the legacy of Ivan Allen Jr., the Georgia Tech alumnus who uh, led the city of Atlanta during a very tumultuous time. So, all right, coming back then to give you a concrete example. What does that T-shaped professional look like? What does Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts contribute to? And that is the School of Modern Languages. We train students uh, who combined advanced language competence and cross-cultural essential skills with expertise in STEM, commuting, design, business, uh, what have you. Almost all of our majors, I think about 85% <coughs> of our major, of students who major in the School of Modern Languages are also have a double major, meaning that they by default are T-shaped professionals uh, by the time they, uh, they graduate. These are some of the things that we emphasize, that we teach, communication, creativity, culture creation, global competence, leadership, sustainability, and adaptability. We do this by offering 12 languages, um, from Chinese to Swahili, Arabic, Persian, German, Spanish, um, pretty much um, anything um, in between there. And um, we, um, we love to partner. Uh, we love to partner with our colleagues at Georgia Tech. Right now, we're building a program that um, combines the School of Modern Languages with um, aerospace engineering. Uh, my colleagues um, in the engineering schools, I'm very uh, I'm thrilled about this uh, collaboration, and I certainly believe that we can do more in that area. Uh, we love to partner with Georgia Tech alums, um, especially alums that are um, in international locations. So for instance, we lead um, 18 study abroad programs. Our faculty leads 18 study abroad programs on five continents in 25 different locations every year. And we have one called Languages for Business and Technology in Germany. And I, I even brought some paper objects. So that means that every summer uh, we bring uh, about 25 students uh, to Munich, Hamburg, Dusseldorf, and uh, uh, Berlin. Uh, and uh, I know that they love to engage with tech alums. Um, they, um, they're immersed in um, the local culture. They visit and learn uh, from uh, corporations and from alums who um, have, have the kinds of careers to which they aspire. And um, I'd love for, for us to engage with your organizations and bring you our students um, during uh, summer of 2020. Many of our students then combine that uh, experience with an internship and uh, or research, uh, and uh, we, um, we see the outcomes of that um, in terms of their uh, contributions uh, and uh, their attractiveness on the job market. So one of the last things that I wanted to uh, just point your attention to that makes Georgia Tech uh, distinctive and uh, unique in today's uh, higher education landscape. Not only is Georgia Tech global, with a global reach, campuses abroad, alums abroad, um, sending students and faculty abroad, having deep research and educational collaborations, we are also global at home. And Atlanta is a unique hub for technology, entrepreneurship, innovation, and global business. And um, certainly there are a large number of German companies and European companies that are have their head, that have their foreign headquarters in Atlanta, and they employ our students. <coughs> they uh, benefit from our students' capacity um, in all sorts of different ways. So I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier in a comment too, that one of the things that makes Atlanta such a rich environment and such a rich environment for a school of modern languages is the fact that 800,000 people in the greater Atlanta region were born abroad. Um, it is one of the most international communities in uh, in the United States, and uh, foreign, the foreign-born population is, uh, is growing rapidly, um, thanks at least in part to its attractiveness to uh, foreign direct investment and uh, in international companies. So this is just a way to give you a little bit of a flavor of what the School of Modern Languages and the College of Liberal Arts does in ways that will fulfill the mission of uh, the creating the next in education and also um, part, uh, part of the ways in which uh, Georgia Tech will, uh, will, will continue to remain a leader uh, in education with a, with a STEM-driven orientation. 
All right, so what about next steps then? I know we're almost at the end of the day, but what can we do together? So I'm putting up um, four different potentials up here. Your, I would love to hear what your idea might be, but uh, here are at least some of them. We offer um, innovative cross-cultural graduate programs, 12 months, 30 credits, um, on-site in Atlanta in applied languages and intercultural studies. <clears throat> I'm very pleased um, that our inaugural cohort of students that we enrolled here in August 2019, uh, that we had a very strong applicant pool and uh, were able to <clears throat> accept 25 students, which for a program in the humanities and the languages these days is really quite, uh, quite good. So we're, we seem to be doing something right, um, and uh, students are finding us, and, and they want to be part of what, what we're building. We also, I also invite you to sponsor, in any shape or form, our summer immersive study abroad programs. Um, the ones here in uh, Europe include um, Germany, France, and Spain. <coughs> and uh, there are lots of different ways to do that. Maybe you want to come and give a guest presentation in our course. Uh, maybe we could come and visit you where you're based. Uh, maybe you want to sponsor these programs to get access to some of our students for internships or future employment. Um, we uh, love um, finding ways for students to um, intern, whether in, uh, in Germany, whether abroad, or in Atlanta. And uh, then we also work with um, Georgia Tech professional education to build and develop tailored, um, custom-driven, customer-driven programs in professional and executive education uh, where we would work with you to develop a program um, or set of components that you believe would be truly valuable and beneficial to, um, to your organization. So um, with that, I was also asked to um, convey that um, support from alums make the Institute even better than it already is. And uh, there are, of course, a number of ways in which um, alums contribute. Two of the priority ways are in um, graduate fellowships. That's an opportunity to come in at early stage, make a breakthrough in somebody's life, help shape the future of your field. You can, of course, also do that by sponsoring innovative faculty research and program development. Um, and this is truly an opportunity to build something that you care about um, and support that work um, in ways that, um, that uh, foster the kinds of things that we want to do together. And to learn more and to partner, please uh, get in touch. I'll be certainly here for the rest of the afternoon. And uh, this is my email and my name. And I look forward to working with you. Thank you. There's just time for a few questions about uh, what Anna presented. Yes. I have a very important cross-cultural question for all of the people from the French campus. You had a slide up there with THWG. What the hell does that mean? Ah. <laughs> the, the French, the French campus people should know. <laughs> uh, if if you guys uh, in France don't know, let me know. But, yeah, yeah, they should know. Can you talk more about that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very very good question. Yeah, I know. I, I saw it. I know, but that was. It was underneath what it meant. It was an acronym. Yeah. To, I, yeah. Yeah, I know what it means. Yeah, it's it's. it's, it's yeah. <laughs> well, of course. And to hell with Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean the University of Georgia, not the state of Georgia. Okay. Actually, we we are very good friends with our friend at UGA, but uh, it's it's our whole district. Anyway, any other question about uh, uh, what Anna mentioned? Yes. So, so this is for Georgia Tech professional education for the for the entire enterprise. Um, 
Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. So there's two things. There's the MOOCs and the uh, master's degree. That's typically the two space we. So the MOOCs, there's millions of people taking it, and uh, we don't focus on the completion rate. But on the master, on the degree side of the education, it's extremely high. I think uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's comparable. It, it's very, very high. People pay. Uh, you know, it's of the order of seven to twelve thousand dollars for an entire master's degree depending on the thing. But the completion rate is, is outstanding. Caroline wants to say yeah, something. I was going to say, it's not just the, 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 we have the massive online master's degrees, but we also have master's degrees in many of the areas of engineering oh. that are also online as well. Though. Right, like the PMAs and so the profession. Oh, you've got a master's in mechanical engineering, you can do online. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right, right. The completion is high because basically people pay for it. Uh, and, and the admission rate, unlike a MOOCs, I mean, you have to be admitted to George in those programs. So it's just a, a different way to deliver the information. So um, anyway, we, we should mention, by the way, that of, if you don't know, we start, of course, with the professional, the masters in computer science. It has, I think, 8,000 uh, people in it. We, we ha then had the big data analytics masters, which is very popular. And we just are starting now cybersecurity. All of those are doing great. Yeah. So one. I have not heard the term data scientist yet on your side. How does that fit into big data analytics? What's yeah. our, is, is that different yeah, we, route or different term? Or no, no. Because no, it's a big term for us. That's sure, it is. It is. We actually have an a, a institute for data science. So, so. Uh, you know, when, when we, this is one of the discussions about whether it's AI, machine learning, or data science. Data science is, of course, the umbrella for a lot of, lot of different areas. We do have actually a master's also, or a PhD now, right now, in data science, right, Mark? Uh, yep. uh, as well as a lot of research. But, you know, when, when we use the term AI, in many cases we are talking about the pedestrian AI, which includes a lot of other things. But data science is definitely an area. So, yeah. Magnus, you want to add? Yeah. So, uh, I was asked recently by someone, where in Georgia Tech does data science live? Mm -hmm. And I said, it's like asking, where does optimization live? It's, it's, it's part of everything now, but mm -hmm. what we have are these cross-cutting research institutes. So data science is a, a research, multidisciplinary research institutes where the academic units participate, but data science as a discipline is infused in a lot of the academic programs. Yeah, and, uh, just just quickly, you, you'll find it in places like uh, material material genome. How do you create new materials faster? And so, data science may live there. They may not necessarily always just be a part of, say, the full institute. So, it, it's everywhere. It's it's, it's a grassroots. Every, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I I just want to take emphasis back to her and her presentation. I, I am a product of uh, a dual degree at Georgia Tech. I did the three two program: liberal arts, mathematics, and engineering. And I have to say, uh, it was a fantastic way to be able to do engineering and learn philosophy and yeah. at the same time. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity. So congratulations, and I hope we do more of this. This is a great combination. Yes, thanks. It's a good way to sort of wrap it up so we leave yeah. time for interactions. At this time, I want to bring the architect of this uh, great day, Marta Garcia. Marta, do you want to come and join me? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Marta and, and I will wrap it up, but uh, go ahead. First of all, I am overwhelmed at how it, fabulously well this group has just embraced all of the exciting things that are going on at Georgia Tech. How many of you have had very little or no contact with tech since you left? <laughs> Good number. Um, and and I, I, this makes me really very happy because the whole idea behind doing these forums is to remind Georgia Tech grads how stimulating the Institute is and how much they gained from being associated with it because very often we do alumni events or used to do alumni events which involved holding a cocktail glass and saying what do you do and where do you live and how many kids do you have and forgetting about all the other stuff that's going on in there. And so uh, this is the third of the series of 
in uh, you know innovation forums. We started calling them entrepreneurship forums, and I realized that it's not just entrepreneurships; it's innovation because innovation can happen in a big company, in a small company. It's part of the tech DNA. So the next question is, if we, when we go to forum number four, very fuzzy in my brain is uh, an idea for energy. Forum number one was a general overview of entrepreneurship and what Georgia Tech is in Paris. Forum number two was FinTech in London. Forum number three, obviously. Now forum number four. We're starting to think about what happens next, and I love your input. You're asking about the topic. The topic. Um, okay, cross-cultural, would that be a, really yeah. Technical, not really, I mean, it's too specific to the Ivan Allen College mission and not university-wide. Well, that's, it's, a, it's university-wide. I think everybody is probably interested in that. Um, Magnus? I mean, there are a handful of defining questions of our time that we do well at Georgia Tech, so. Security is one, which could be a good Ooh. theme. Uh, yes, yeah, cyber security. Uh, well, if it's, ci it's cyber or um, political security, or you know, security do we get really want to get into the weeds? Uh, no, no, climate and uh, environment is yeah. something we do well. AI environment, yeah. uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, do we? Do we? Are we thinking the next form? We. we unlikely that we would repeat Germany, so I'm thinking maybe Zurich. Would, how would Zurich be uh, a convenient location for a lot of people? I, what's making me really pleased is that there are people... Uh, Paris was almost exclusively French. There were very few people. There were a few. There was... There were... Sandrine, help me. There were people from... Uh, Norway, Belgium, and you. Germany, Spain. yeah, and Spain, um, and then London had more people from other countries. Germany is actually becoming probably the strongest so far of the international presence. We even have an Ecuadorian here. Wow. <laughs> uh, it, I'm, th I'm thinking places that are easy to get to um, for everybody, central, that everybody would in Europe would like to go to. The best city in the world is Vienna. Ah. <laughs> there you go. That's an official ranking. Vienna is the best city? It's well, I happen to love Vienna ranking. enormously. According to one ranking, it's yeah, the best. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> I have, a yeah, that's a, that's, that, but we don't have a lot of alumni in Vienna. We have very few. So if we start with very few, but it's definitely worth exploring. Do you have many Yes. Yes. Okay, because in Switzerland you also have a lot of foreigners, so um, there's a good chance that you have Swiss people plus uh, uh, Germans living in Switzerland. Yeah. Or and even Italians coming out here. So uh, a lot of you think Zurich is a good? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah, it's good. Okay, so we'll start fuzz, you know, this is a fuzzy survey, very, very untechnical, very un, unscientific, but I appreciate your input, and during happy hour and networking, we can, we can talk more, and, and, and obviously Sandrine and I are uh, a keyboard away, and um, I think, do we have any other? No, uh, Sandrine? Ah! Picture. Sandrine oh. wants a group picture. Where do you want? Where do we do the group picture? Oh, I see. Group picture right here. Do we fit here or outside? Yeah.
Yeah, then probably yeah, outside, right. outside. Outside. Outside better. I would have stairs. Outside? I gotta, I gotta okay. stairs. And with this, let's go outside. And with this, I officially close this uh, really great forum. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs>